This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 639 for January 20th, 2020, Highlander Rules. Insert obvious reference here. Magnets, how do they work? Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston, and joining me as always is Moonpeer. Hello. And the Nimp. Hello. Uh, Patreon.com slash E1M on the ones are numbers. We recorded a uh, little over 30 minutes uh, <laughs> just in the first segment. That's not even counting the the two other shows that are going to go on the Outcast as well. So, yep, because uh, we had one. We, want... we had a big Outcast yesterday on uh, yep. Pre Game Club 2 talking about facial hair. Pretty short one this week on We Rogue Like It that's pretty good, too. So uh, if you want exclusive and uncensored audio. <laughs> yeah, uh, lots of swearing. <laughs> Patreon.com slash E1M1. $5 a month is the tier we recommend. Uh, it's super cheap, and you get just a whole a whole bunch of great stuff every week. Um, brand new episode of Old Dog New Flicks coming up soon, the last Friday of the month. <laughs> I just... still, still need to edit that. Uh, so it's com- okay. coming Not soon like a week and change yeah so you know, moon has plenty of time and you have plenty of time to sign up so you can mm-hmm. get it a couple of months early uh, and i think that's it so moon what have you been playing this past week nothing nimp what have you been playing i'm okay. just kidding i'm just kidding okay oh, i was gonna uh, say all right it's gonna be a little shorter than you'd expect uh i played a little bit of thimbleweed park yeah only a little bit i'm not even going to talk about it because i've made my feelings on the game perfectly clear right now I played a little bit of Bomber Crew, for those people who don't remember, that's the really cute sprite, like, tactical, real-time bomber game that's on Game Pass. Go play it, it's really stupid fun. It's still on Game Pass, I think. Yes, it is. Um, I don't know for how much longer, hence why I'm playing it a little bit of a time right now, just because I don't want that. You have 10 days left to beat this game. Crap. Oh, no! Kind of thing. (laughs) Which happened with Grip. That happened with Grip when I was playing it. Yeah. Dead by Friday. Uh, T-Bar Marks, Brain Eater, members of the community jumped in, had a blast um, there was minor inebriation issues we'll say. Sure, that happens I'm not going to yeah. say who or what was the inebriation factor but it was funny uh, and we also had a I don't know what <coughs> happened, but we had three different matches where Literally everybody except for one person was the same character, so we all switched to the same character. <laughs> so we had a a three times four ways for the like survivors all being the same survivor, which is dumb and right. stupid, and I absolutely love it. Uh, but the main thing I played this week was um, Talos Principle, which yes. was this month's Game Club game. Uh, so that episode will be coming out is it Wednesday. Uh, same time this comes out. Okay, so that yeah. was out now, so go check out that if you want to listen to yep. all of the 50 hours I put into that game last minute, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> also because that game is huge. And it's very good. Yes, so go check out that episode, yeah. but yes, that's literally all I've been playing, the Talos Principle stole my life. Um, so oh, Nim, no. what have you been playing? This time for realsies. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to open up with a short little story. Okay. Because I've been horribly sick since Thursday, and I decided that no matter what, I am beating Cold Steel 3 this weekend before the oh, podcast. No. Oh, no. Okay. So, I laid down a bunch of blankets in my office floor, mm-hmm. and, and then I laid down and faced the screen, loaded up the game, and 15 minutes later, my wife realized that I fell asleep before the loading screen popped up. <laughs> the way it should be so she woke me up about five hours later by accidentally tripping on my body and landing on top of me (laughs) oh god he's dead yeah luckily there was enough fluff between my natural fluff and the blankets on the floor so nobody was hurt um but yes i knocked out cold steel 3 that's all i played this week finally Um, for real done yes i yeah did we see credits? Oh Proper gosh. credits? 
proper credits. I have multiple the credits. For beating it. <laughs> nice. Okay. So this game series just seems to suffer from having so much fluff and stupid posturing towards the end mm. that I just started skipping like entire scenes. <laughs> yeah. I just did not care. Well, um, as you know, it's the like the fourth time in a row someone's going to explain something to someone else, and it's like, yeah, I, I get it. I was there. It's, like just exactly yeah. that it's yeah. the whole thing and then not to mention the fact that you have all these characters so anytime anyone does something everyone has to stand there and yell out that person's name right 17 different people right and yeah, kiske was, ayane kiske yeah. just like the, please stop was please there a really bad laughing scene because that's still my favorite no. moment of fluff in all of video games ever is the Final Fantasy X laughing <laughs> scene. Oh, the vampires were our friends the whole time. Ah, ha, 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 But yeah, no, there wasn't any laughing. However, mm. they did. I'm going to get all the bad stuff out before I get to the good stuff. Sure. So I probably skipped about a good six, seven hours of just fluff. Mm. Um, and it was literally like you were saying, just rehashing a stuff that happened 20, 40, you know, 60 hours <laughs> earlier in the game that they already heavily explained to you. But it's like, oh, hey, right. this other person's here. So they're going to give you their scenario, which you already knew because as the player, they showed you their scenario. It's just the characters in the game didn't know that scenario. Right. And of That's... course, they don't do the thing that I love when JRPGs do where it's like, oh, you don't know about this? Here's what happened. Fade to back, black, fade back up. And that's the whole story. I was like, yeah, great, perfect. Exactly. Um, I was there. Yeah, and it was just dumb stuff. Like, they kept pulling stuff from the beginning of the game, and it's like, look, I understand I've been playing this game for 90-plus hours, but I retain stuff, okay? Right. <laughs> I do not need you to recap my 90-hour experience in this game in the last seven hours right. of this freaking game. <laughs> I was there for that, too. Yeah, so it was literally just, uh, Originally, I had started because you can choose the... Um, a, they call it like high speed. It's basically like triple mm. speed, and then you can do auto text. So that started running through the text very fast. But then I found out if you hit L1, it just completely skips that dialog box. Oh, okay. So you see the dialog box, you read it, hit L1, it skips, it goes to the next one, and you just keep doing that. Gotcha. And then it just got to the point that it was so diluted that I just started hitting options, skip event, options, skip event. Right. I got to a point where it blacked out the screen and it was like earlier that day. I'm like, nope, skip event. I don't <laughs> effing care. Not this I is was what's there for that too. Yeah, this is what's happening above ground. Nope, I don't care what they're doing above ground. Yep. Just get me to the end of the stupid game. Right. With all of that said, though. <laughs> Honestly, I've said that multiple times. Usually it's about a game that I'm doing achievement hunting in. Like right. Rambo, the movie, the video game. That was yep. a game I said, get me to the end of this game. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I don't even have, I think I'm at 40% of achievements or <laughs> trophies for this game. Mm -hmm. And there's no way I'm going back and doing yeah. New Game Plus on this. Yeah. Right. I, I but... learned my lesson with Eternal Sonata to not do achievement hunting while playing JRPGs. Eternal Sonata is the worst where it's like, all right, you're going to have to do a minimum of four playthroughs for this. So here's the plan. It's just like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> and the vast majority of the trophies seem to be RNGesus. Mm. And I hate it. That people, and it's not just Japanese developers, it's American developers yeah. and Eastern, you know, European well, developers. Especially in like a 90 hour JRPG, it's like, I don't want to have to grind for 40 more hours for one trophy. Yeah, for that 0.001% whatever. Right. It's mm -hmm. like, just show me the location where this stupid thing is at so I can kill it, get into my beast area and move on. Right. I don't care. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and one less bad thing. When, there were certain battles that you had to go through as you're winding through the final dungeon, and it'll tell you, hey, you need to have these characters in your party. So instead oh, no of just saying, way. hey, put these people in my party, it just backs you all the way out. So then you oh, have to God. then you have to remember who they wanted you to put in your party, run up there, find out, oh, no, forgot to switch in that person, mm. switch that person in, and then you can finally go and do the, the fight to continue God. on. That's my second least favorite JRPG trope. After mm -hmm. now you have to split your characters into two teams for the final boss battle. Yeah. <laughs> and one of those teams is level two and the other is level yep. 90. Like that's my well, XP favorite. sharing. No, thank you. It's just like, oh no. Okay. 
Well, this game does do a lot of splitting up. However, they do do XP sharing. All three games do it. Perfect. So everyone, they meant, like, I think Reen was 56 and everyone was roughly about 55, 54. I had one That's or two characters that was maybe 53, 52. So, I mean, they do a pretty good job with keeping everyone right about where you're at. Um, but yeah, they, that's all my bad stuff. The good stuff is they go some real deep, dark places with the story at the end. Nice. They straight up kill characters. Oh. That normally have plot armor. Oh. (laughs) And they do it brutally. Interesting. And then the game just ends. (laughs) Do any of them get turned into vampires? No. There's only one vampire so far that I'm Mm. aware of. Highlander rules. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, after getting through all the fluff and stupid posturing, yeah, the actual end story that they should be giving you was actually really decent. And I am looking forward to whenever 4 will come out. Yeah. Which can be whenever. (laughs) Well, it seems like they've been... The localization for those games has happened faster and faster because they're not – there's no English voiceovers. There's none of that stuff. They they localize. They polish all the stuff and they kind of try and turn them around as fast as possible. Yeah. But it seems like – I think it's already out in Japan right now and usually it's been about a two-year lead before it comes out west. It's not bad. So – Yeah, I think it just came out in Japan like last yeah, month, last this year month. or the year before. When I don't yeah. know. But very, very recently, yeah. Very much looking forward to that. Yeah. And that is the only game that I played because that took all of my time being awake to play and beat. Right. The little time you had awake and I, and sick. I did go through and read a synopsis of like the last seven hours of the game. I didn't miss right. anything. Right. It's like I was well, able I mean, to. You saw the vampires. So what well, else yeah, did you? I, was, I was able to parse out what was happening to be able to read the, you know, what few important bits there were. But right. yeah, the vast majority of that crap can just be skipped and it has yep. nothing to do with the story unless you have not been paying attention at all through the entire game right right so that's all i've been playing all right well uh <laughs> this week um this very very short week apparently <laughs> uh, yeah uh this week the the tvgp alumnus and i have uh managed to recruit someone back into the Destiny 2-fold, long-time so, friend of the show, Bill Sifford. Oh, uh, oh, no, no. Was that what it was? Was it you? Because I... Oh. Well, we, I <laughs> he said, hey, Destiny 2 seems to be in a great spot. Should I come back? And what else was I going to say? Like, no, go away, no, run away. You, so, were, you were not supposed to say the first taste is free. That's what Destiny is saying right now. That's right. You well, he already had the free that. part. He already played that. Um, so he, um, he hopped back in and our, on our normal Thursday night, uh, game night, um, he hopped in and we did the zero hour mission from like last year, something like that. Um, that was the, the timed one where you get the, the cool nanite gun at the end. So, um, I think we only did three or four runs through on that and they were, they were doing really, really well. And we got really close the third time and the fourth time, we managed to to finish it with eight seconds left on the clock. Oh, um, so got them both that gun, and uh, we're we're off to the races to do some other stuff that isn't timed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so you're uh, a monster. I I really I just I want more people to play with me, and now we have three people. So like, now you either have a squad we need, you can stop preaching. Right, either we need less people or three more so we can start raiding. I'm not going to lie, I have debated <laughs> reinstalling that game now that it's free so I can get the yeah. last achievements that I'm missing on it. Oh, don't do that. No one's running that content <laughs> anymore. It's not going to happen. I don't care. I will go on an achievement hunting website and be like, I am light level way above this stuff. Someone yep. speed run me through this raid, please. Someone run Prestige Leviathan and you should get your last few achievements. You don't even need to do Prestige, I don't think, for them, do you? You do, yeah. Normal Leviathan and Prestige, because those are the only two trophies I'm missing. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't have the pl- I don't have the platinum in Destiny Two. As weird as that is, that's also because you're not a raider, though. That's true. And now no one does that content. So, ha <laughs> ha, boy. Uh, so Destiny Two still going great. Not going to talk about the puzzle stuff that's going on right now because it's been a community puzzle event that's been going on for a week, and it's super inside baseball now, and no one's really interested in it. 
Uh, I've also been playing as much Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions uh, as I possibly can. Um, the game names that you two come up with are <laughs> always hilarious. Uh, like, I'm going to have an awesome one for you next week, assuming listen, I get better. <laughs> yeah, mm. listening to you two talk and an, or even just listening to an episode of Pop, it's like... You guys are Atelier just Luxie, Dusk of Dawn. It's just like, what the hell? Yep. See, uh, so, commas and colons and... <laughs> right. The beginning. Origins. Yeah. Um, I finished the first character storyline. I started off with uh, Urpina, um, which is just such a bad name for a character. Um, I finished up her storyline. Are they a horse? Yes. Do you summon them with a with an ocarina? Just a lady. Okay. <laughs> just a regular lady. Um that would that was really good. The the final boss battle was uh I ref on Twitter I referenced it as wonderfully brutal. It was incredibly difficult in a way that didn't feel unfair. So I talked about it last week. Um, if you go into a dungeon or something where there's multiple fights, they'll show like this one's easy, this one's medium, this one's hard, and it'll just It'll say, like, you're going to do these three in a row. What they changed for the final boss of her storyline is you had three fights back to back. But basically, in the first in the, the first part of each fight, you would knock the boss down and then he'd get back up with full health again. So you're sort of each fight had two rounds and then the last fight had three rounds in it. Um Normally that would be really annoying, but by that time, you level up to all your skills so they're they're cheaper to use and they, they take less time to cast. You sort of know how to manipulate your party into the best way to do the most damage in one round. Mm -hmm. So it's very much a race to get as much damage as you can to knock him down and interrupt him. He'll get back up and then race through that damage again. And it... It felt really good because if you ever didn't do a round correctly, you'd get not really punished, but he, he'd put a pretty good amount of damage on you. But it felt really great saying like, all right, all this stuff has finally come together and I like my party is doing really well and I can kind of lightning round through this stuff. Yeah. Um, so the, the combat system in this and also Bravely Default is a good example of this. Is mm -hmm. this the evolution of the JRPG into taking some SRPG elements and kind of inserting them into that kind of combat system? Because the way you talk about the combat system, the whole team ups and you know making right. people combine and doing a little Tetris thing where you get them all together and you do a big attack, it always just makes me think of Disgaea and making like one person and there four people who you spawned off them <laughs> stack or... stacking five people on top of one exactly. another, yeah. or even just the add-on attack where it's like, oh hey, you have a ninety cent ninety nine percent probability of them attacking with you, and the next thing you right. know, you're because they're your students. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I feel, I feel like JRPGs have have started to do that. You can also, um, as much as I didn't like it, um, Octopath Traveler can sort of be that's by the uh, one of the teams that worked on the bravely series um i you're getting a good idea i think and you're you're sort of hitting, hitting the nail on the head here where it's i feel like there's still a market for going in and hitting attack on all your all your party members and just kind of hitting x uh over and over i was almost going to say that's what dragon quest is for but that's that's not really fair to that series um, but I think you definitely are seeing this evolution where it's, especially in the, um, the case of Scarlet Grace, they're sort of minimizing a lot of the other stuff. Like I talked about no explorable towns, no explorable dungeons, more focused on figuring out these puzzles on the world map and figuring out the puzzle of the, the battle system. Um, and I think they took a really great approach very much like Bravely Default did, where I think the the best part about Bravely Default, the, its battle system, Bravely Default, the first one has everything about it is incredible. But the battle system very much has this, not risk reward, but it has this great thing of where like I'm going to store a bunch of power here over a couple of turns and not do damage to kind of unleash something cool or a very powerful spell or a very powerful effect. So it's this kind of 
every turn matters and every turn isn't just slash 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 heal when you need to keep on going yeah. um and i think i think that's what is really interesting to me because i like i like the traditional jrpg like i really loved um dragon quest 11 and i i think anyone should try it it's a great starter rpg and it's a great dragon quest game because it it manages to celebrate the traditional JRPG stuff where you have your party here, you have the enemies here, everything's really cute. It's a big, giant world. It's going to mm. take forever to play and then sort of throws a bunch of twists on top of pretty much everything the game does. Um, but that's why I love this sort of uh, B tier of JRPGs. And that's not... It, the same sort of B tier we have a reverence for on the show for the longest time, where it's like these aren't bad games; they're just not your AAA games that have twenty million dollars in just the physics engine. You know, this is Saga Scarlet Grace is like a two million dollar game probably that came out on the Vita four years ago. You know, but there's so much about it that's great. I mean, talked about. The soundtrack is incredible. Saga games always have great soundtracks, but um, it's one of those games I like where it's definitely not perfect. And now I'm playing as the the second storyline. I I picked the other woman because uh, I ran into her during my first character storyline. I thought her stuff sounded interesting, um, but it's just doing enough stuff in a really cool way where they just they're they're taking all they're taking a bunch of risks and they're, they're trying a bunch of stuff. And especially with the saga series, it typically doesn't work out. Um, but I think Scarlet Grace is one of the games like saga frontier one and two saga frontier two is so good and no one played it. Um, uh, they, they try to do something really different and they try and do something that sort of changes up what a JRPG is. And I think Scarlet Grace does it really well, but if you play at other JRPGs, you sort of – it's not totally out of out of its depth. Like, um, God, there was that 360 game that Square Enix put out, um, Last Remnant, where, like, you pick up that game and you're like, yeah. I don't know what I am – what what am I supposed to do with this with this game? Like, you've got two 40-person armies fighting and there's a bar in the middle. Like, this isn't – what? Um, it didn't help that it had a game-breaking bug towards the end of it too. God, that that game had a, that game had a lot of problems. I was gonna say, I think it was that game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was that, and one of the Star Ocean games at the same time had a similar thing, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, yeah, but Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions so far has been really good. I don't know how long this this character storyline is. I after I finished the first character storyline, I looked up. Um, I, I guess I had accidentally done an optional, very long quest chain on her stuff. Sure, um, yeah. Boston does extra stuff in games. Well, I didn't even really mean to. It was basically like you went to the final area and the guy who was always with you was sort of like, hey, this you run into this dude a couple of times. Do you want to go here I think you should investigate what this guy's doing because it doesn't seem to be doing anything good. <clears throat> and I was like, well, yeah, sure. I mean, sure. Why not? 25 hours later, it's like, oh, okay. He was up to no good. All right, let's go do that thing. It's like, oh, okay. You think you're doing the main quest and then you get nothing at the end. <laughs> yeah, I did. And people are like, oh, on future playthroughs, I just skipped through that storyline. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, the only bummer about the second character right now is I'm doing – a quest line that I already did on my main character at the end of her playthrough as the beginning quest line of this character. Um, and it's a little bit different. It's sort of like she was off doing this thing. I'm off doing my thing over here. So it's, it's not that bad, but it's a little bit sort of like, mm, kind of already did this. I've seen some of this stuff already. So it, it seems like that was a poor choice for me to run her storyline after the first one. Uh, but there's no way I would have known that. Um, <clears throat> thankfully, there is stuff you carry over from character to character. Um, like I picked – I carried over – there's a whole list of things that you can carry over and um, sort of like a Tales game. Uh, and 
the developers have a recommendation on what you what you should choose. Like I I carried over the the skills that ever I carried over the unlock requirements for all the skills that I unlocked in my first one, so I know how to unlock them in my second playthrough by <clears throat> you can actually carry over the skills you've unlocked and the skill levels if you want so like at the beginning of the level you have an end game skill that costs one battle point to use and you're just sort of like chopping through a playthrough um i didn't carry over any of that stuff but i like that you can carry over uh, all that stuff and the thing i've liked the most is they unlocked a faster speed for the battle system so during attacks and stuff they are going lightning fast and that's great um because that's that's not the part i care about i care about the the choosing and seeing what the enemies are doing once i've put in my choices like it's just gonna it's gonna go you know the into the breach turn just happens um so i really like this i i purchased um tokyo mirage sessions sharp fe encore and i I really want to start that, but I know if I don't finish Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions first, then I won't get to it. And Saga Scarlet Grace came out middle of December last year, 2019. So it's it's a potential uh, 2020 top 10 pick uh, since it came out in the the window. So I gotta I'm enjoying it enough that I I gotta see it through. So, uh, but that is all I have played this week because I have a three year old. That demands my attention 24-7. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> yeah. So, let's take a break. Let's talk about release for the week of January 20th, 2020. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath HD comes out for the Switch. The one Oddworld game I have not played. Yeah, and the one that everyone seems to really love. And every time I read about the spoiler, I go, oh, yeah, man, that's really cool. I got to play that. And then I immediately forget about the game and the spoiler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> That was yeah. the one that originally came out on the original Xbox. It did, With yeah. The crossbow mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah, where you're the bounty hunter. Yeah. 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 This all, always seemed really great, and they keep putting it on platforms I own and modernizing it, and then I, I, I don't forget play about it. it. I yeah. want to know why they were not included in the stupid stumps. Uh oh, that company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good question. They should have been on the stamp. Yeah. Who Who else was on the stamp? Sensible uh, Soccer was on the stamp, which of course yeah. has to Hold has on. to be out there. Uh, Moon's talking about um, the UK announced a limited that's edition. Like Frontier se- was yeah, they announced a limited edition series of stamps, which is basically a the heritage of British um, video game development. Yeah. Um, hold on a minute. Let's see if I can figure out what's on it. Um, do do do. Oh god, there's a special edition that comes with the Tomb Raider miniature set. But yeah, there's like eight stamps and then a, a legacy collection. And uh, mm-hmm. the legacy collection is four Tomb Raider games showing like screenshots of the evolution. Because most people don't realize that was made in England. Yep. Um, but there's like Elite on it, Sensible Soccer is on it, Wipeout is on it, which I thank you for putting that one in there. That's cool. Um, I don't... What... Hold on. I don't know what that one is. <laughs> I know one of them, but I'm leaving one of them to mention till last because it, like it's so stupid. Like I don't know why it's in there. Like why? Like Elite was on it. Why isn't Theme Park on there? Theme Park, Theme Hospital. Yep. Like there are, like, uh, Populous is on there. Lemmings is on there. Both Worm, of those make sense. Worms is on there. Yes. Great. God, I love worms. Yeah. Dizzy is on there. Right. That Why was an is interesting Dizzy choice. On there? Dizzy, I think, is a 
bigger game than I think most people realize, but I in I don't UK, think it's a recognizable yes. enough. Yeah, Dizzy in the UK is a genuinely recognizable game. Dizzy is also the biggest hot garbage game that you've ever played. It's not yeah. good in any way, shape, or form. Why? Yeah. And I'm probably going to get heat for that because there are Dizzy <laughs> fans out there. There's dozens of us. <sighs> yeah. They're like the, the they're like the fans of that stupid Bobcat fella, whatever his Bubsy. name is. Thank you. Bubsy. Yeah. They're like Bubsy fans. <laughs> you don't Go buy know. our merchandise. Yes. <laughs> you don't know that they exist until you say something bad and then right. the flames come to get you. I mean, at least they have Lemmings and Populous on there and Sensible Soccer. Like those are the big title wipeout. Like those are the big mm-hmm. British developed games you want. But Yeah. But still. I don't know. Dizzy is a weird choice, man. Dizzy shouldn't be on there. Yeah, it's not the same. It, they're acting like it's like Sonic. Where it's like, of course Sonic goes on the, the stamps. It's like, mm. mm-hmm. yeah, it'd be like putting Rystar on there. It's like, it's a good game, but come on. All right, let's talk about our news, other news other than the stamps. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn might be coming to PC later this year. Um, I wasn't going to talk about this, but... Um, Thank you to the Hannah for reminding me that this is the same engine that powers Death Stranding. Um, so I wonder if, since Death Stranding is coming to PC uh, sometime this year, I don't remember when, I wonder if it was one of those things where we got Death Stranding running. Oops, we also, with a little bit more work, got Horizon Zero Dawn running. Why don't we toss that on PC too? Like, <laughs> might as, might as well. And God, I bet that's going to look so good yep. at like four true 4K. I uh, had a PC? lot of people talking as well about the potential of, depending on how much work they want to put into it, um, can they put ray tracing into it? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I wonder I wonder if the, the engine... I, has, I don't know if they've... I don't know if Death Stranding on PC has ray tracing support or not. I don't remember if they've announced support for that. I feel like that's kind of a 50-50 for a lot of new games on PC, like after Control did so well with ray tracing as like a, here is a real game with a real new technology in it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of a 50-50 for new games getting announced. Because I think Metro Exodus also had ray tracing in it, I believe. I think it did. I think Mex- Metro was. Exodus was the very first one because that's a PC dev. Like, they absolutely... They're- they're on the bleeding edge. Yeah, all of the Metro yeah. games have always been that kind of games. Um, Exodus got a lot of flack because they're like, why are you putting it on console same day? You're going to make it look worse because you're putting it on console. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, no Armchair developers back out again. Yeah, no announcement on ray tracing as of yet for okay. Death Stranding. Death Stranding will look real good with ray tracing, too. It, it would, but come on, Horizon with ray tracing. Yeah, Horizon is the one where he, that would be... That would be the one you want. Oh. And Horizon's a really great game. Both it and its DLC are really good. I want to see the crazy mods that they do for both of those games. Yeah, like n- they replace all the machines with the goose from Untitled Goose yeah. Game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a game, though. I I keep starting. I'm at the first major city that you come across. Mm-hmm. And that's where I've been for like the last couple of years now. And every yeah. once in a while, I'll boot it up. I'm like, oh, I should get back into this. And I have icons everywhere. I'm like slowly back away <laughs> right i'm just gonna i i liked that game a lot but i think it took me a little bit of time to get into it and i think once it sunk its teeth into me i it, yeah. i wrapped that up pretty quickly I, I, for horizon i am at the still need to take out of the shrink wrap phase of my right. playing of that game right it's really good it's I it's i know there's just not enough hours in the day uh speaking of mods though give me macho man randy savage as the um the things in Death Stranding. Every time you go near one, as of them, the it just, BTS, yeah, it just appears and goes, "Oh yeah!" <laughs> but what like really what quietly. What if it's the flying whale? Where instead of hearing the whale, you just hear, "Oh <laughs> yeah!" That'd be great. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> be really good. Uh, all right, let's move on to questions. Uh, T Bomb Rocks hits us up in Discord saying, "If you could have one complete toy run of any toy line from your childhood, what would it be?" Uh, one I never had but always wanted, uh, Transformers. Especially if you keep it going all the way through modern day, those masterwork Transformers look 
Those master oh, robots are cool, dude. <laughs> like, I have no Vinny, like Vinny, like fondness like, for Transformers, and those masterwork ones are just. You yeah. look at them and you're like, yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Were those the ones that were made out of metal? Yes, like they're yeah. Those, some of them are made out of metal. They run anywhere between two to five hundred dollars, depending on which one you're looking at. Like, yeah, I think they did a uh, mailbag for Giant Bomb East at one point, and Vinny just pulled out a bunch of his masterwork Transformers. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like. Dude, they're huge. They're cool. They look amazing. They're absolutely ridiculous. It's like they cost the price of a new console. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I feel like I never really, as a kid, I, I've. I feel like I didn't have a lot of like toy lines that I was really interested in. Like we had Matchbox cars, and I had like a Transformer, and maybe a couple of GI Joes and stuff. But like, I never mm. really feel like I gravitated towards that one thing that i wanted to have i never really had a series that i liked like all my friends had transformers and i just loved the toys i didn't watch yeah the, the show or, or anything like that so yeah me neither but no I, I would like the original run of what we here in america call teenage mutant ninja turtles yeah was that um, seriously a hero's reference that i just had come on yeah <laughs> Um, because as a kid, I did have, I had all of the offshoot characters and I had everything except for the original Shredder and the original Master Splinter. Oh, wow. I would not find those two at all. But I had, like, literally every other, like, my parents would take me to Toys R Us off base and Mm -hmm. they would have everything. I had the minivan. I had April's van. I had all this stuff. I, that's technically I didn't have April because my sister got April. Right. But Mm -hmm. you know, it had toys end up in other rooms. Right. They (laughs) just disappear after a couple of weeks. You know, Mm -hmm. who knows what happened, but I, I actually ran across those a couple months ago when we were cleaning the house. Cause I have them all in a, in a tote downstairs and I still have like the belts, the weapons, the costume wow. accessories and all that stuff together. You took to super great care of that stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I don't, I feel like I don't have any thing like that. Like I think the one Christmas, I think like the whole family got, um, uh, the ghostbusters building. You remember when oh, they the made like, like the firehouse? Yeah, yeah. Like the giant firehouse we got that for one year and i i think we played with that for like five years straight because like you don't have to put the ghostbusters in, you can put anything in there and it's hilarious here's my little pony uh, working in the firehouse hey that's awesome mm-hmm. i remember yeah. having all of the star wars toys like those star wars toys mm. the ones that everybody right. talks about in like these days right. i had them all at one point don't know what happened to them i probably put them in a bin one day and then they probably got taken to a charity shop right Hmm. Yeah. Uh, He also asks, I've been thinking a lot lately about games or types of games that can help with depression. What game or type of game would you recommend? Personally, getting back into roguelikes have helped me because I seem to focus more on each run and unlocking new items. Um, Also, Tokyo Mirage Sessions has certain qualities in a JRPG I want to keep coming back to. (laughs) Excuse me. Um, Viva Piñata. Yeah, that's just like a... It's a, a good, shot of joy. Green sky game. It's like looks amazing. It's really fun to play, and it has so much more depth to it than you will appreciate when you first load that thing up. Like, and you always have like a goal you're working towards. It's like I want to unlock this type, so I need to do these sixteen things to like eventually build towards getting this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Mine was just staying away from like. Gears of War, Halo, Modern Warfare. Yeah. Because they all, you know, they all go towards that darker palette mm-hmm. for colors, the heavier music sets, the more serious BS. And after a while, it kind of gets to you. So then you kind of kick in like Dragon Quest, where everything's right. colorful and bright. And Katamari. You see people are happy, and the monsters are there, and they're smiling, and they're happy to beat you up. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Snake Pass is dumb for that, is dumb fun for that same thing. It's very yeah. green, sky. green sky. I feel like blue sky. I feel like you would need like a solid puzzle game just to like completely focus your brain on one thing other than all the other stuff you're really trying to think about. 
Yeah, I would recommend Talos Principle, but if it's a dealing with depression thing, you don't really want to be questioning the extent existential nature of life, death, and what right. is a human. So the thing. witness. <laughs> I'll go away with that one too. Witness is so good. It's also uh, Yoku's Island Express. That's a ah. Uh, there game. you go. Yeah, that's a great blue sky that game. Little stupid horn. That mm-hmm. annoyed my <laughs> wife to no end. <laughs> yeah. I have to get the tr- achievement. <laughs> 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 yep. Oh, I got the achievement. I'm still going to keep doing it. <laughs> yep. Something to occupy my my finger. I feel like I need more horn. Yeah. I wish there was a more... I wish there was a really solid version, uh, like current gen version of the Katamari games. Because that'd yeah. be what I recommend, where it's like, here's the most recent one. They're largely the same. Just go pick it up. Yeah. A lot of Child bright of colors evil. and upbeat music. Yeah. Uh, what else? I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's a good that's a good just put out another Viva Pinata, you cowards. Please. How is there not a family friendly section in the Game Pass app? I mean, honestly. That's a great question, yeah. Like, I mean, come on. Seriously? Uh, Mechanical Beacon Chat says, any R-type game, Dopamine Overload. That's yeah. that's also something where it's like, if you want to laser focus, no pun intended, on this one thing, oh boy. then you can... <laughs> ha! Mm. Uh, Maximus Prime in Discord asks our final question this week. If you could create a new video game subgenre based off of your favorite genres, that would be the next Battle Royale replacement. What would it be and why? So what what would you create that would replace <coughs> battle royale, auto chess? You know, like the the biggest of the big mm. subgenres. Whatever Tarkov is, I still have no idea. Yeah, the less said about that thing, the better. Yeah. <sighs> I have spent <laughs> I've spent the last week not playing a lot, but I've spent a lot of time watching Final Fantasy Tactics Battle. Battlefield? What is what is that called? Battleground? FFT Battleground. Um, it is salty bet for Final Fantasy Tactics. So you're you're betting on randomized teams that are fighting against each other in Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, and it is really good. FFT Battleground on Twitch. Um, if anyone hasn't watched that, I I highly recommend it. Uh, if you don't know what salty bet is, go look up that too, because that's certainly uh, something that will get your brain thinking what what's going on here. Well, and the great part about FFT Battleground is because it's an SRPG, you can also spend your money to buy skills for party members that are going to go up in the next battle. So it's... It's really cool. it's a little overwhelming in the same way that salty bet is, but it it's it's really cool and I, that would be something that I think, um, I, that would be my preference is sort of the next extension of Twitch plays Pokemon, because um, mm-hmm. that was that was such a for like three months that was such a huge thing and I think the next extension of it is, uh, having longer standing player interaction uh with a game because twitch plays pokemon that ends at some point because you you beat the game Mm -hmm. but something like fft yeah but something like fft battlegrounds the two teams are never going to stop fighting and there's never going to stop being uh brackets for it so it just kind of like salty about it just goes on forever yeah um, if I'm going to do, it's not a new subgenre, but if I'm going to choose something that kind of takes the place of that whole battle royale thing, it's asymmetrical multiplayer. Like, yeah. A good 4v1, really well done, a good, you know, I think 13v1 is probably pushing it a little bit too much, or 12v1 mm-hmm. as it was, but like a good solid asymmetrical multiplayer seems to be the thing that's really clicked with me a lot now. Like, yeah. I really love the stupid monster game. I can't remember the name of it now. Evolve? That's the one. Thank you. Yep. I really love that as much as people didn't seem to enjoy it. I really like playing that. I really like Left 4 Dead. I really like uh, Dead by Daylight, Friday the 13th. Like, 
Have you have you heard about the the largest asymmetrical multiplayer game in China right now? No, is it being a human? No, it is uh Tom and Jerry. Uh a company has made a a 4v1 Tom and Jerry asymmetrical multiplayer game that seems to be largely in the v- not tone obviously but gameplay sort of design vein as dead by daylight and it mm-hmm. has tens of millions of people playing it daily that's cool. it's wow. crazy i watch a bunch of footage of it and it's like this look, number one looks like the cartoon which is incredible yeah number two manages to get the tone of the show right and number three looks really fun yeah <laughs> it's not available anywhere else which is a bummer yeah <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a give me a good brawler as well. And I don't mean Streets of Rage brawler. Give me a Smash. Every single company needs to create yeah. and release a Smash game. Like Well, don't worry, they're all gonna be in Smash. Yeah, I know they're all gonna <laughs> be in Smash. Anyway. But, and I, 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 I keep harping on about this because I'm a giant fanboy of it, but Shonen Jump, they made one of the yeah. best Smash games of all time and it yep. nobody seemed to appreciate it because it was on the three D S. Like Well it was on the D S, right? Yeah, actually, it was the original DS. DS. It wasn't yeah. on the 3DS. Yeah. Like, give me a good one of those. Like, Sony already made it and f- failed they spectacularly. They tried. <laughs> but at least they tried. Yeah. They tried. can do it. They've got the clout now with the amount of studios they own to probably pull right. in a lot of that kind of stuff. Well, they made, have uh, the same team that made um, Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct's a great game. Oh, uh, have so good. Have them make a a, a brawler. Yeah, like a four on the screen brawler. Yeah, give me that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Give me all of the universes combining. Like that's kind of what makes Salty Bat so great. Is like what if blank fought blank, right. and that's what because like, Mugen is just so crazy. Yeah, it's like yeah. what if Goku fought Mario. It's like oh okay, sure, yeah. sure. Why not? What if a dolphin fought the car from Daytona USA? It's like okay, mm-hmm. cool. Let's see which one wins. <laughs> Pepsi Man from Ultimate Fighters or what? Mega Mix versus you know yep. Lara Croft. It's like. I'll, I'll, I'll bet on that, yeah. Like, I mean, sorry, but how great would Square's version of that be? Yeah, if they wanted to try that again. Mm-hmm. But do it properly. Do it like, a, yeah. like, could basically have it, take the smash, change the engine, and keep the controls, and you're fine. Like, yeah. it License could out be, the smash engine. It <clears throat> could be amazing, like... Yeah, all of Square's properties in that you've got the whole Final Fantasy range, you've got the whole Kingdom Hearts range, and that's pretty much where it stops. And one of your summons could be one of the Wanzas from Front Mission, where you throw the thing down and the Wanza stomps on the screen. It's like, yeah. you know, what's really funny is we are completely forgetting about Dissidia, <laughs> like Dissidia NT, which is available now and heavily supported by square but it's not it's all right it's yeah it's fine like i really liked the first dissidia on psp but i feel like the most recent one is kind of missing something like it it just it controls weird it the camera angle is weird like it's just a a little bit off it it, to me it feels like they added a lot more systems that shouldn't aren't necessary at all it's yeah. just one more thing for you to mess around with that yeah one more thing to helpful. manage yeah exactly yeah so yeah uh nip any ideas of what you would like to rise to the top of twitch i just want a new mag oh, <laughs> there you go a great game only and because i think of it this way if you look at playgrounds if you look at apex if you look at fortnite they all took bits and pieces of mag. 100%. And yep. they built it up to their own specs. Mm-hmm. And despite my feelings about it, all three of them are popular. People like, you know, whichever ones they like. But I would really enjoy having that game basically put back together and thrown out mm-hmm. there. Where instead of just 99 people go at it, hey, either 50 on 50 or 100 versus 100, have right. at it. And have that like chain of command again, and have the the uh, encouragement for the teamwork because you're mm-hmm. working for your squad and your and your side and your unit, and like there's multiple levels of teamwork. Well, it's like, well cause, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say like Battlefield took from it, like Battlefield took the oh pro- yeah the progression mm-hmm. of the map because like once you got into those huge fights in mag and it was like 256 or whatever it was <laughs> yeah and like literally you had to win a section 
and then you could take that section and move forwards and then take the next section and move forwards until yeah, like hold was, your your points yeah and then everybody yeah. was attacking this huge base in the middle or defending it it's like battlefield took that with the evolving like across the map battles and then mm. call of duty took that from battlefield which took it from mag and it's just like come no. on god mag is so good and those giant games were always the best because there was just so much chaos going on where mm. yeah just tr- once you realize how big the map actually is especially when yeah. you're pushing forward because unlike battlefield it didn't prevent you from going back into the old area you could still start in the way back mm-hmm. and run all the way to the front line <laughs> yeah 10 minute corpse run <laughs> yeah. yeah and yeah. it's just the crazy random stupid stuff that just made that game so great <laughs> yeah. yeah and then you'd have the whole thing where like you your team might have like be struggling to take this point because you've got like the best from the other team defending your section and then the points to your left and right get captured and then those squads notice what's going on and then just literally come in from the side and it's a three-way attack on this one super squad and then yeah. they lose the point and everybody else keeps pushing forward. It's like, it's a great evolution of the battlefield. It's just, a Mag's problem, and it was identified when it came out, is it just came out too early. If it I, had come out even a couple years later... I, I think we would see it on uh, like the most popular game on Twitch. You know, if streaming had really been around then, I think that could have saved Mag. Yeah, I mean, didn't it also come out when the because it number one, it was a the console exclusive. PSN network came down. Yeah, it yeah, was like the next week, PSN went down. PSN and then that went down, and it's just like, yep, and it just never recovered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and also, it's one of those things where like the marketing. There was one small marketing hiccup at the beginning where Mag didn't the really name. stand for massive action game. It no. really didn't. It just there was this marketing flub at the beginning where it was like half a joke and it didn't really happen and that just stuck with it forever. It was like, oh, you want to play Mag? I don't want to play a massive action game. It's like, please, please. Mm. please. And they yeah. they also had the microtransactions and stuff in there too, where you had a character slot, or I think you had two, and you could choose which of the the people or the teams to join. Yeah, and yeah, and you, you like were stuck with that in team with that team. Yeah, that's until true. Until you got to max rank and prestige, basically, then you could switch or start again on the same one. Yeah, you could always switch and, and like you and could start buy the over, extra yeah. slots and you could buy the extra people like character slots and stuff like that. And that's it's true. Like, Forgot about that. Come on. Yeah. My so, yeah. Mrs. Zipper. Our answer is bring back Mag. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's our episode this week. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Everywhere to find and follow us is on the right hand side of the page. Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones are numbers. Uh, as we talked about before, tons of behind the scenes, uncensored stuff, early access. Five bucks a month is the recommended one. You help me pay for uh, hosting the show because it's uh, pretty expensive. And I don't talk about it that often, but there's um, – I'm very clear about how many people I, – I don't hide the, the income on the, the page. Um, so you can see how many people are there and how many people are are patrons. But you can also see the, the goals we're reaching towards for how much stuff actually costs per month. Uh, so you can see that you on also the need to page. add into that Boston plays a scary game as a goal, please. Thank yeah, you I, I need to, but some of the goal stuff about Patreon is weird. Where it's like you can do this or you can do this, but you can't do like dollar value or people value. Just hey, sort Moons, of a- surprisingly, there isn't a drop down box for play scary game on. I don't know what to tell you. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not not yet. Soon, I'll put a feature request in. Um, game club. Uh, brand new game speaking of patrons chosen by you the patrons uh, yep. we just finished up Talos Principle uh, as Moon said that's in the public feed right now and we're going to be playing a hotly anticipated title This is the Police 2 which Moon and I have been patiently waiting it's been it's it, ready to fire it up since we absolutely adored the first one we are cautiously excited about playing the second one mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true uh, so we're going to be playing that for this next month um if you don't listen to we rogue like it that show is is doing super well uh always fun to record and hopefully everyone is enjoying listening to it and playing uh some roguelikes with us and i think that's it so we'll see you all 
next week. Ciao. Bye. So Boston, you best believe I'm going to be talking about Formula One a lot when that season starts in like six weeks. You should, because I want to watch the the behind the scenes stuff. I think that sounds cool. Hopefully that comes out on the next couple of weeks or so. When it comes out, you will be tweeted and then you will be expected to watch the Formula One highlights. It's a 10 minute video on YouTube every week. That's it. That's all you're going to watch. My kid and I can watch it. We'll see if we'll see what we think. Uh Send me a text. Patreon goal right there. Boston. There you go. F1. (laughs) I become an F1 racer. Yep. I said, of course, here we go. All right, uh, Nimp, hit me with your titles. I got one, and it's Bring Back Mag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write it down. A rally and Cry. Uh, Moon, how about you? Uh, I got a couple. Uh, this time for realsies. Start with a short story. Inebriation was a factor. Proper credits. I was there for that. Options, skip event. (laughs) Plot armor. Highlander rules. Not Highlander rules, but the Highlander rules. Highlander rules. Um, Fluff and stupid posturing. The first taste is free and just a regular lady. (laughs) I have minor inebriation issues. uh, Tripping on my body. Uh, bring back Mag and Highlander rules. I like tripping on my body. Um, of course I like bring back Mag. <laughs> I like them both. I think Highlander rules is my personal favorite in the. That's your vote. I can I can get behind Highlander rules. I don't think we've ever had a Highlander. I don't think so. Title here. Let me. Because that's a deep cut from the '80s that nobody's gonna understand. Hey, there was a 1990s movie, and the, yeah, I know that's true. Was, that was the one that was a, it was a Christophe Lambert, I believe. Um, yes, and also there was a Highlander TV show that took place after that that even less people heard of. Yeah, uh, that's true. It doesn't appear that we've had a Highlander title, so I guess I guess yeah. we're due. That works. All right, I'm gonna circle it. I'm gonna make the reference since I get to go first. <clears throat> I figured okay. you were going to. It is mm-hmm. is your right. Trust me, yes. I go through my mind and think, okay, what are the common things? I'm like, nope, yeah. nope. <laughs> yep. All right, let me know when you guys are ready. I'm ready. Nim's the one who actually has to think this week, so. I know. Yeah. He doesn't get the obvious one. Let's put a Star Trek joke in there. I Trip kind people of up. Really... Number two. <laughs> something completely out of the blue <laughs> right. I really really want to do a really bad accent too but I won't do it I won't put the okay. people through that you won't toss out your best Sean Connery Mm-mm. no alright I got I something never talk okay. about Sean Connery man. <laughs> there you go alright starting in 3 2 1 this is that video game podcast episode 639 for January 20th 2020 Highlander Rules Insert obvious reference here. Magnets, how do they work? (laughs) (laughs) All right, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us live, (laughs) hanging out with us. We are not magnet scientists, but we will see you next week. Bye. See ya. Bye. And we can stop recording.